Hey, how you doing, you sexy people? I hope you're doing well. In this Blender Quick Tip, we'll be learning how to create some double-sided image textures, as you can see here. These are essentially two image textures applied to a single plane, which is pretty neat. We can do some really interesting stuff with this. So, let's begin. Just a quick heads up, guys. There is a written version of this tutorial available, which I'll link down in the description box. I've got a standard Blender scene set up here, and for simplicity's sake, I'm going to select everything and delete it. To import our image textures, go to File, Import, and then Image as Planes. For this to work, it's very important that you have a front and a back for your image textures, and make sure that they're the same resolution, otherwise this won't work. Before I import though, I'm going to make sure that the use alpha is selected. And then import. Rotate the image plane by 90 degrees by using the R key and then typing 90. Right now all we have is a 3D plane. To be able to see our textures, what I'm going to do is head over to the viewport settings and then select material view. Let's get to the shady stuff. Get it? Shady stuff because we're shady. Moving on from my bad jokes. In the shader editor, I'm going to duplicate my image texture node like so. And I'm going to clear it out because I'm going to use my normal map. It's a good idea to really flesh this material out with things like occlusion map and specularity map. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to stick with a normal map. Because we're using a normal map, I'm going to set my color space to use non-color data. Before we can use our normal map, we need to convert the non-color data from this image into vector coordinates. So we're going to add a bump node. Plug the color to the height and then normal to normal. You'll see straight away that our bump node is way too strong. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.05. Nope, not good enough. Let's set it to 0 0.1. Yeah, that should do it. Next, select everything and then duplicate. These duplicated nodes will be our back facing texture. It's a hassle, but we'll need to plug everything back up again once we've duplicated our nodes. While making this tutorial, I spent about 20 minutes figuring out why my back facing textures weren't working. So it's a good idea to load up your back facing textures. Now that we have set up our front facing textures and our back facing textures, we need a way to blend these two together so we get our front and back on the same object. And for us to do that, we're gonna add a mix shader node and plug them in like so. And finally, I'm going to add a geometry node. This will allow us to assign our back and front facing textures to our object. Now to assign the textures correctly, it's very important that we select the back facing output of this node and plug it in to the factor. I'm going to use the control and spacebar key to exit my shader editor. And then I'm going to go over to the view rendered settings so we can see what we've created. And there you have it folks. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Stay awesome.